again, I've got a little bit of a project going on here. These are two sets of moulds, they're very old, and they come from the late great Andy Hopkinson. Now, they are special moulds to me because I've been after these for many, many years. This one is from Doctor Who, in fact, both of them are from Doctor Who, as you can clearly see. This is the Brain of Morbius, and this is the Hand of Fear, or it would be if you opened it up and cast into it. Problem is, these two moulds are absolutely ancient, and they are, well, showing their age. They're starting to tear and degrade a bit. Now they are silicon mould with a fibreglass jacket and what I need to do is repair them. So that's what today's video is going to be all about. It's a process video. Okay, to set the scene, I've told you that these things need repairing and let me show you why exactly. Let's show it to you with this hand mould. So as you can see, this is essentially how the mould works. You, they are actually designed for fibreglass. I'm going to be casting resin into it. So what you would do is you would lay up one side and then you would lay up the other side, lay up the top, stick it all together, clamp it, and then in about an hour or so you would have a lovely cast. The way I'm doing it is I'm actually using pourable resins to put in there. And I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I pour it in, once it's like this, pour it into there shove the top on and slosh it all around. Now, the problem with that, and even with the fiberglassing, is that this mold is starting to tear. There's a huge chunk missing from here, which I need to sort out. And then you've got a section here. Now, it doesn't look too bad until you do that. Now, again, that doesn't look too bad either, but there is a huge cavity running all the way down inside here, and that does cause issues further down the line. But also, because this is moving out of the way, that causes registration issues. Now, when I did do a casting before, and here is a casting from about a year ago, this was a rough casting I did when it was really cold, so it took ages. It took 45 minutes for this resin to cure, when it really should have taken about 10. But because of the lack of registration and that hole, you ended up with this hole. Now, when I was pouring the resin into those moulds, a lot of it disappeared and I couldn't work out where. And, and then when I opened up the mould, there was this, well, this cavity here, this hole here. So where did all the resin go? Well, you've guessed it. It actually ran down into here. Now, it doesn't look like much, but this, as I said, this cavity goes all the way down here and it took something like 30 or 40, maybe even 50 grams of resin going inside there, and I pulled out this ginormous icicle. So my job on this, and the same with this one here, let me just show you this while I'm at it. So this one isn't as bad, in fact, as this one. Same kind of problems, but we do have tears that can cause issues. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix a very small amount of silicon and I'm going to eyeball it. Usually you would do it under strict measurements. So you do 3% of catalyst, which is this stuff. You add this to that to make that stuff go off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up small amounts into a little container like that. And I'm going to use it as glue. Now, I have done a test. You probably saw it earlier, but there's some, well, there's some pink stuff here. That is actually my silicon, my new silicon on this ancient silicon. And I did this purely to test whether this is compatible with that. It's set, so I know it is. And I did the same on this mold, just to be on the safe side. I've got a little test there. That's cured as well. So that puts me in good stead for this project. That means I can use the new modern silicon to glue the ancient silicon back together. So I can't really express how tedious this is going to be, and, I, and to be honest, filming is going to be a bit of a problem. So what I think I'm going to do is a suggestion by my mate Dan, who uh, kindly provided me with these moulds, um, when was it, last year? He said, why don't you just time-lapse it? So, yeah, okay, we'll time-lapse it. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to patch these up, hope to God that it actually works, and then once I've done that, I'll do a, a test pull. I'm not going to do any finished pieces for this because it's not really worth it. I mean, like I said, this is a test pull from last year. It was literally just to see if the mould is working. I did a quick rough and ready um, paint test on it, uh, an effect for the top to give it that sort of quartzy look. So this is 
I mean, this is not a finished piece, it's not perfect or anything, it is literally just a test. How does the mould work? Where are the problems going to be? And how good has the mould survived after all these years? And given the fact that I've got a hand out of it, pretty well, but it does need a bit of um, sorting out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the beginnings of what I'm doing. So as I said, I'm going to be using silicon. I've just eyeballed out a small dollop here and I'm going to laser eyeball some of the catalysts. And then I'm just going to basically make it up as I go along. So I need 3% ordinarily, but this isn't an ordinary job, and for some reason nothing is being sucked up by this. Come on you bugger! There we go. Right, let's see if I can get some out. Ugh, typical. Okay, let's go and get another one. Right, you contrarian. That is way more than I need. So... 3% but I'm, I'm not going to do 3% I'm going to do way more I'm going to overcook it I'm going to put about that's probably closer to 10% let's put that there because I'm just using this as a glue I don't have to be quite so enthusiastic when it comes to accuracy just so long as this stuff goes off that's all that really matters so you can, you can see it's already over catalyzed because it's way too pink. It's, it's going almost into to mauve there. Now I am going to try something. I'm going to see if I can suck some of this up into the syringe and inject it into the cavity. So, well, that's clearly not going to happen. Oh no, I suppose I could pour it actually, yeah. Why don't I try pouring some of this in? Because it's taking too long. Yeah, that's enough. Is it going to work? Right, here we go. Gently does it. Now where those spillages are, that's not so much of an issue. So silicon on silicon is very, very sticky. However, I've got some IPA here, and IPA works beautifully at cleaning up silicon. So what I'm going to do is just wipe that out and wipe it off the inside there. So now this is the boring bit. This is why I'm doing it in, in little stages because this takes a little a little while to cook. Now it's being held together, so I'm gonna leave that to cook. So basically what I've done, injected some of the silicon into here, using that as a glue. Like I said, I've overcooked it, so this is gonna go off quicker. It is slightly wasteful, but there's nothing I can do about that. But once this side here completely gels and dries, I can peel this side back and then refill that and do the same pretty much with this over here. Actually, I suppose I could try, I suppose I could try to fill the other side while I'm waiting. Let's have a look. Didn't think I would do this on camera, but mm, is it a risk worth taking? No, actually no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to leave this to set and then carry on. Okay, it's been about an hour since I applied this, and I've come to a little bit of a decision. There's going to be no time lapse because the amount of footage that it will take of me doing this, because the operation is actually quite quick, there'll be virtually no footage. So it's just going to be more of this. So sorry, Dan, no time lapse. But anyway, guys, um, guys, the silicon glue has taken on this side. It's it's nicely fixed, so that's not going anywhere. But we are still open on this side so what I have to do now is to backfill all this and clean my fingernails. Uh, backfill all of that with silicon 
and I'll do that again pretty much in the same way as I did before. I'll put it, I'll basically inject it in, squish it in, push all this down, and then I may put a little bit of silicon on top just to act as like a, a top sealer, but we'll see. I'm just prodding it to uh, burst any air bubbles that I may have introduced. But I've got to be a bit more careful on this one. Let's see if we can get a bit more in there. Now what I'm hoping to do is seal this side of the crack. I mean, this isn't quite so important, but if I can leave it open a bit and then just inject some in here in a minute, I say in a minute, shortly, uh, that should fix it. But like I said, this, this part isn't really part of the surface mold, so it doesn't really matter so much. I just need it to join together so that when I come to put this on, the, you know, that bit doesn't move this piece and cause a misregistration. I just need it to hold itself together. So, yep. That's that bit, and then I won't show you the next bit because it's going to be more of the same. And then a bit later on, I'll do this side here. Again, it'll be more of the same. I'm not sure whether I'll show you that either, but let's just carry on with this. Well, let me carry on with this. I'll be back in a minute. Right, the light is fading. It's getting quite dark now, so I'm going to have to just do this, and this will be the last for today. But it's pretty much the same as last time. Inject some of this in here. And uh, let it build up. I mean, really what I could have done is added some thickener to this. And what that would have achieved would be to make this a bit more manageable, but because I've done it quite hot anyway, it's going to start thickening up relatively quickly anyway. So for now, this should be, eh, it should be workable. I'm right on the, on the edge with it, so. You know, I can always come back and do like a second pass. But just as long as I get this filled, that should be good. Now, of course, I should be prepared, and I'm not. And actually, I'm not sure if I need any to do anything more than that. No, nope, I'm just going to stand here for ages and hold on to this. Yeah, that should be all right. Maybe a little bit more just in there. I am really pushing my luck now with this. because I really don't want it to run everywhere. Yeah, I may have slightly overfilled that, but if this can hold its if this can hold its shape, that would be brilliant. You can see it's already starting to gel, so I'm going to be careful there. Right. What I'm going to do while I just go off camera off frame, I'm just going to take my brush and dip it into some alcohol and I'm going to try and work it. There we go. Don't want it to go into there. But the alcohol enables me to smooth off the silicon. And that should be relatively decent, I think. Yep, okay. It's just a case of uh, waiting for this to cure. And that's it for now. That's the mold more or less finished. So tomorrow I'll come back to it. I'll reassess it. Do I need to put a little bit more on? To be honest, I don't think I really do. And then it's on to the brain mold. Uh-oh, I have committed a cardinal sin here at the Towers. I have brought PB Proxer Models work into the main house. However, that said, the moulds have been a raging success. And uh, yeah, I might as well show it to you because I'm very, very pleased. So the reason why we're in the house is because just recently it's gone very, very cold outside in the conservatory in what they call my workshop where I work. It's down to single digit figures. We're talking about three or four degrees centigrade and 
I'm just not working in that. None of my silicons or my resins want to cure in that. But anyway, I finished the moulds. They've been a raging success on my ad and I'm really happy. But before we get into all of that, I just want to ask a little bit of a favour from you, dear viewers. If you do watch my videos, it would be really helpful if you could like, comment, you know, come and talk to me and we can talk about whatever you like, and also subscribe. Now, if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I'm uploading. Of course, I don't stick to any particular regimen, but uh, you will know when I do upload. The other thing, now, it does cost quite a fair old amount of money to run this channel. Things like resins and silicons and glues and one, all the little bits and pieces that help me to make these projects. If you want to help me purchase some of those, YouTube have recently introduced this feature, and it's down just below this video. It's called a super thanks. So if you're signed into Google, you can drop me a couple of quid if you want to. Don't feel pressured, you don't have to, but it's there. And any money would be helpful. I mean, I'm paying for pretty much all of this myself, but if you want to help, you know, help me with the channel, I'd be very, very appreciative. Anyway, enough of the advert. Let's get on with what I've been up to. Moulds. So the last time you saw me, I was siliconing up these moulds, so silicon on silicon, and that's that's what's happened. There's the the first repair. There's the second repair. Uh, I didn't really need anything on this side or that side. However, I, I want to show you this. This has been amazing. Just what that has done here, the difference it's made is phenomenal. Now, when I originally cast up one of these, I did tell you about this. Let me just grab the other one. So here's the one I did last year. And one of the issues I had was some of the resin was disappearing actually into the silicon, which it no longer does. But also at this point here where the hole is, not only was it disappearing inside the mold, but because of the cracks and the tears, the mold itself was, was moving out of position. And what that allowed to happen basically was all of the resin was either pouring out of this side of the tear or that side. And I have done a cast and that didn't happen. So that's amazing. Now I'll come to that in a minute. The other piece is the brain mold. I did do this off camera because quite frankly, there's not much point showing it to you because it's well, the, the work that's been done is so small. You probably couldn't see me do it, but there's been all sorts of little tears that I've repaired. There's little bits in here. Uh, there's the the tear that I showed you the other day. That's completely done. There's also little bits and pieces in, inside on the blind side here that I've patched up and stuck back on. In fact, I actually found the remnants of an old insect buried deep within one of the details here. So, yeah, that's been around for at least 30, 40 years. Uh, I did the same on this side. It's just some minor bits and pieces. Again, I can't really show it to you because uh, it's on the blind side, but it's all in sort of here. And I did do a rough casting of that. And I have to tell you, the results, I think, are amazing. Let me just show you. Hold on. So let's start with the hand first. As you know, uh, the, the other hand, it was not particularly brilliant. It was full of air bubbles, but this is the new hand. There is nothing wrong with this. It's got a bit of flashing and all that, but I can quite easily trim all that off and I'll do that later. I'm not going to bother with this. It's, this is just a raw casting. Uh, so as I said, there's there's where the, the tear in the mould was, so material was pouring out of here and not actually coating this. So, and there's the same side. Look, completely solid, absolutely perfect. This is a brilliant cast. Even the surface texture is perfect, so that's good. I also did a test pull of the brain, and that held together really well as well. And here it is. Again, don't mind the flashing. This flashing here is quite thick, actually, and the reason for that is basically the clamping pressure. I couldn't get enough clamping pressure to push this side against that side. I was basically tying it, so I need to come up with some sort of method of really clamping those. I could add on some bits and pieces here where I could bolt through them and pull it together, or I could strap it up, or I could make two plates and have one on there and one on that side and bolt them together and tighten them up. But that's for later. This has come out beautifully. Now it is hollow, just like the hand, and it is quite thin, but I'm using a special type of resin. It has a bit of give to it, so it's a little bit on the rubbery side, but not that you would know. So if I tap it, you know, this 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 isn't going anywhere. This is a extraordinarily durable piece. Now, originally my idea was to backfill this with an expanding foam. 
With this resin, there's absolutely no need for that. This thing could survive a nuclear blast, probably. So anyway, that and the hand are two extremely successful castings, and I'm really happy with that. So hopefully at some stage in the future, it's not going to be now because it's way too cold for that, in the new year, in 2023, maybe in the spring, I'll get these moulds up and running and do a little production run. Who knows? But stay tuned on that. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for joining me as I repair the moulds for these. And if you're interested in such things, such as casting or making moulds, there are some more videos here that I'm sure you can go and watch. In fact, go and do it now. Tell them I said hello. Right then, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.